Okay, so today we are looking for a turbulent flow analysis or else turbulent model. So in the previous cases, we also uh, studied about the flow of the fluent, but we only use the condition that is called a laminar. Okay. So we already uh, analyzed a tube session. So in that session also we apply uh, turbulence, I mean viscosity as a laminar condition. Okay. So you know that what is the difference between the laminar and turbulent. So a laminar uh, is the fluent is flows in a regular manner. So there is no disturbance at all. Okay. So the flows look like this. So if it is a turbulence, usually 90% uh, or most of the cases the fluent has some turbulence. So due to the increased velocity and pressures. Okay. So the best example for the laminar flow is our blood. Okay. So the blood is actually flows in a laminar way. Okay. So whenever the aircraft uh, which is having that aerodynamic analysis, the air is hits on a turbulent model. So it should be like a, there should be a, some twistings and changes like this. Okay. So what we are uh, looking for in this analysis is a. Uh, uh, what happened when a fluid is flows inside a uh, pipe position, so whether it may be a water or a air, uh, what will be the velocity and the pressure drop nearby the wall? So especially uh, the fluid is a turbulent flow, in the turbulent flow. So in laminar cases and in turbulent cases, the pressure and velocity changes will be much more deeper. So when I try to draw a model, I mean a graph, graphical images, like this. So usually uh, in the laminar flow, it should be like this. So what does it mean? It's like at the center, there will be a maximum velocity. So in any cases, at the center of the uh, at the axial direction, the fluid flows in a high velocity. Okay. So towards the wall, due to the friction. The velocity uh, may be decreases, the pressure may be increased. So the velocity and pressure is vice versa, I mean directly proposed to each other. So it should be look like this. So we have a maximum velocity at this point at the center and having a minimum velocity at the uh, nearby the wall region. Okay. So in our cases, this is the two wall regions. Okay. So let's consider if it is a turbulent flow. So I am showing that this is for laminar condition. If it is a turbulent condition, what happened? You'll get the same uh, graph, but not exactly like that. Uh, so you only a bend, you only have a bend like this. Not a too curvy bend. Okay, in the previous cases. You have a bend like this, right? So we don't need to have that due to the turbulence. Okay. So due to the turbulence, the velocity is actually more or less same, similar to in this all cases. Okay. But although if it is very closer to the wall, the velocity may be drops. Okay. So we'll clearly uh, analyzing this problem. I mean, uh, once we get solved this problem, you'll get the difference between the two things. So we will find the y plus value, y plus wall value in terms of graphs. So we already explained this y plus wall factor in that uh, species problem also. So let's solve this problem uh, and uh, we'll try to find out or figure out that uh, velocity and uh, pressure drop nearby the wall. So I don't need to uh, give any boundary conditions at all. So I only uh, shows the diameter value of the pipe recession and uh, it's having a velocity that is inlet velocity. So this is act as an inlet and this is act as an outlet. And we have some distance at all. So we will design this model by using design modeler. And in this case also, uh, we can solve the problem by using symmetrical condition. Okay. So we can only model the half of the session like this. We can only model the sessions only. 
half of the session and uh, we can revolve and we can assume this as a center line so this center line has this edge so this model can be rotated in 360 and it's like an axis symmetric problem it's not a symmetric axis symmetric so it can rotate uh, about this axis at a degree of 360 okay so we don't yet need to uh, design the entire thing we, we can only design uh, the half of the station so then the distance may be roughly that is equal to 0 0.1 so the total distance is 0 0.1 i mean 0 0.2 so we can uh, create a, a surface uh, for a design, I mean for the value of 0 0.1, okay. So first I will drag and drop the uh, fluent flow. So we are the entire session, we only working on the fluent and double tap on the design modeler, I mean geometry. So by default design modeler will be get started. So if you want to define this problem, so I want to be uh, only working on 2D, probably you can first uh, define that also. So or just right click and you may have an option to choose the properties. So just click on the properties and additional tab will be opened here. So by using this tab, you can say that uh, I'm only working on that uh, 2D, but uh, right click properties, see. Uh, you may have an option uh, that is analysis type is right now set to 3D. You can choose from 2D or else when you try to open the uh, fluent, it ha always asks so whether you want to solve the problem in 2D or 3D, you can choose 2D. Right now I am choosing 2D here itself and uh, open the design modeler. The first thing you need to do here is change the unit system. Okay, so by default we only working on uh, meters because uh, I just draw the model, uh, I, okay, so I don't need to uh, give any dimensions at all. So that is 0 0.2 meters, not mm, okay. So I don't need to change the units, but just make sure uh, it's set to meters or not, okay. So once it is set up, uh, just create a random sketch. To get a normal view, just click on here and choose XY, right click and say look at Go to sketching, I'll draw a random rectangle, okay. So once it is uh, get drawn, uh, I can make the dimensions. So go to dimensions, mark the uh, vertical and horizontal dimension. So once it is get marked, so I'm only interested in the half of the session. So that means the vertical distance is obviously uh, Okay, uh, right now the value is having around 18. So if you get, uh, if you say it's 0 0.1, you get a very, very minimum length. And uh, the horizontal distance, I didn't get uh, mentioned over here. So the distance is eight, it's eight meters. Okay, so I'll say eight meters. I'll say look at, for a better view, so probably you can uh, delete the dimension and uh, remark the dimension okay, and say look at, now we will get a, a better view. Now we can mark the dimension okay. So the horizontal distance is 8 meters and then vertical distance is 0 0.1 meters okay. Now you have to uh, convert the sketch into a surface. Uh, you may be familiar with that concept. You have an option that is surface from sketches and choose the sketch. So the best way is you can choose from the design tree, choose the sketch and click on apply. So you don't need to apply any thickness at all because uh, we are solving the problem by using axis symmetry. So I don't need to want to uh, define any factors at all. So click on generate, now the surface will be generated, okay. So our designing part is completed right now and just try to close the design modular or else you can minimize it anyways and double tap on the meshing to get into that meshing environment, uh, there you can define the mesh 
and the boundary condition that is what is inlet and what is outlet and uh, which act as wall and which act as axis also. So it's good when you I mean once you created the geometry probably you can save the geometry for a future reference but I don't I don't know uh, I mean I want to I don't want to change save the uh, model because it's a simple model right we can easily create that if it is a complicated model you can save it for a future references and choose the surfaces just make sure uh, all the properties are correctly assigned just check that okay so once it is done you can try to create a mesh okay so how can i create a mesh so by default uh, i just create a default mesh just right click and say generate mesh it will create a uh, mesh like this okay so in this condition uh, which is my axis okay I, I just clear the screen so in this case uh, this edge the top edge is act as a wall wall and this edge is act as inlet and then opposite edge like this act as outlet and what about this so this is act as an axis okay so we have the plate like this so this is axis so we can revolve around this axis the entire surfaces at a degree of 360 okay so that means uh, my resultant area so i'm only interested uh, it's a turbulent flow uh, i want to view the result on the nearby the wall okay so nearby the wall so we need a proper mesh so how we actually created a proper mesh nearby that uh, airfoil structure right so like always we need to create a proper mesh nearby the wall okay so right now we don't have any splitting so over here so I can so we have a so many methods to create a proper mesh so I'll use one method that is edge sizing method okay. so how can I create that so just right click on the mesh so right click and say insert we have an option called the sizing I'll choose uh, this edge this edge and click on apply now the two edges is selected so shift the type to number of divisions I'll give a number of divisions of uh, around uh, maybe 30 So once you give that, we need to also assign that uh, biasing also. But first, uh, we we'll try to create the mesh, and also I need to apply uh, the, I mean, another edge sizing for this and this, and click on apply. Uh, by default, it's set to element sizing. I'll choose number of division, and I want uh, divisions of hundred. So, in this edge, you will have a 100 segments, that is 100 splittings like this, like this, okay. So, and uh, here you only have a 30 segments, okay. Right click and say generate mesh, oh, okay. So you'll get a, you'll end up with a mesh like this. Uh, actually, it follows that boundary condition, but not exactly. So here it creates a fine mesh nearby this region and a coarse mesh over here. Just because in that sizing, there is no the adaptive sizing is not turned on. Just try to turn on that and right click and say generate mesh. Probably uh, okay. We will end up with an, another type of meshes. So what I am going to do here is I just select the edge sizing 
and change the type of the behavior from soft to hard it will strictly follow that condition so what i actually assign and also i will try to uh, apply a phase mesh for a proper splitting right click insert you'll have a option called phase splitting you may be remember that we have used this method in the biasing concept when we do a i mean when we learned 2d meshing in uh, ansys workbench so what uh, the phase mesh will do is to create a, i mean which creates a proper mesh i just apply that uh, i don't want to change any other factor just right click and say generate mesh okay uh, you will have a fine mesh like this so totally you have a 30 segments and uh, 100 segments in this directions okay but uh, i need a, a coarse mesh i mean a fine mesh coarse mesh nearby the center and fine mesh nearby the wall okay why we need a fine mesh nearby the wall is because the resultant area is nearby my wall so that is why i need a proper mesh so the more number of nodes nearby the resultant area the more number of accuracy we get so that uh, i can apply a biasing factor so it's very simple so just click on the edge sizing you'll have the option to choose the biasing i just enable the biasing you have a linear biasing and then uh, what is that bell curve but i don't want bell curve i'll choose linear biasing So it asks you for the biasing factor. Just start with a, a factor of five or ten. Maybe I can use a ten. You maybe notice that uh, now we'll have a more fine mesh nearby the uh, fine segments nearby the wall and a co segments towards the axis. Okay. Just make sure uh, the other end also having the same thing. I'll just zoom out and check out this. Thing. Okay, so in the another end, the mesh is actually having the reverse direction. The biasing is in the reverse direction. What you're gonna do here is you can just click on the reverse, just click and say apply the edge. I'll get a proper uh, thing like this. Okay, so close on this side and fine on this side. So once it is settled. just right click and say generate mesh okay fine so now we have a fine mesh nearby the wall and having a coarse mesh nearby the axis okay uh hey so hope you will uh, understand what i'm going to do yes okay we successfully created our, our mesh So the next thing is we need to assign the boundary conditions. So that is very very important. For that, uh, you can just create a new selection. In this case, it's very very easy. So just right click, just select this edge. Make sure you are in the edge selector mode and choose this edge and right click and say create new selection. It's inlet, it's inlet. Click on OK and the opposite end. just select this edge uh, choose this edge and right click and say create name selection we name it as an outlet and click on okay okay now we have a two named selection one is inlet and one is outlet and uh, this thing so we know that it's wall right wall and say okay and also you need to define the center axis uh, just select right click and create the named selection name it as axis so this keyword is very very important okay so if you don't include at that keyword so the keyword is nothing but i'm talking about that inlet outlet wall and axis these conditions we need to specify in that boundary condition So when we get into to the proven environment, right? So just make sure uh, 
uh, whatever the name you may be given so the inlet velocity or uh, outlet valve one or two or three so they just make sure you should be always use that keyword otherwise you need to manually assign uh, everything it's maybe a uh, complicated process when we are in the fluent okay so i think we completed our uh, the creation of meshing part and then uh, named selection okay so i just close the meshing environment and try to update the mesh because once you uh, update the mesh so the entire data will be transferred to the setup so otherwise it won't it will take some time okay so once you get the green color tick mark in the geometry and meshing you can move on to the next step that is setup so just double tap on it now the fluent modulus get started so obviously it's a 2d model we already defined in that uh, properties manager you don't have the option to shift over from 2d to 3d and uh, just enable the double precision you know that if you enable this double precision your probability of convergence will be increased and as well as the solving time may be uh, also increases so it doesn't make any sense uh, obviously we need a convergence problem right so just enable that precision and get started with fluent okay so once it is get opened uh, just try to zoom and this model just make sure you have a proper mesh just click on check uh, you can check the volume statistics and phase area statistics and uh, uh, make sure all the values are in the positive if you have any negative values probably your geometry will have uh, some open loops so you need to go back to that uh, design modeler and make sure the model is correctly modeled or not okay so the next thing you need to do here is to set this thing that is 2d space so right now in 2d space uh, by default it choose to planar it's not a planar analysis uh, right now we are doing an axis symmetric problem so i'll choose axis symmetric and one more option is available uh, below this that axis symmetric squill so what does it do us uh, it's the uh, it revolves a model in this direction like a uh, like this so not this in this like a spring okay so in that case we'll use this option but in our case we only use it axis symmetric okay like also uh, we use a uh, yar so that is why uh, it's a compressible so we'll use we'll go with pressure based one we don't need to use density based one and uh, the velocity it doesn't varies with respect to time so we stick to steady state and if you want to add the gravity you can add the gravity but uh, in this case i don't want to turn on the gravity at all okay once everything is done so if you want to change the unit system for any values like length or masses you can change it from here itself and i'll move on to the model to define the viscous condition okay so in this case there is no temperature or anything is involved in this case so that is why i don't turn on this energy equation i just leave as it is just turned off and just click on the viscous condition to define the viscous so as i said before so uh, our case is uh, i mean our flow flow is turbulent flow okay so you don't need to choose a uh, laminar at all for turbulence so other than that laminar all the conditions we have sparkler and then k epsilon k omega these things are a turbulent flow but uh, for our convergence i just follow the uh, values which is you are having in your pdfs okay so if you give your, you can also give your own values but your problem will take some more than 5 uh, to 6 number of iteration to get convergence values okay 
so to view all the things like uh, how to assign this and then how to view the result for that we just follow the same thing uh, when we follow these things we get a proper convergence factor so i'll choose k omega that is equation 2 so once it is choose okay so i'll choose k epsilon so once it is get selected uh, either if you want you can use a standard one or else in some cases we'll use a, a, a labels i mean uh, uh, in which cases we use uh, in upcoming session we'll have a periodic flow so in that cases also we'll use the label so we have some on pdf also so in that pdf Uh, you'll notice uh, you have some recommendations so in which cases i can use k epsilon in which case i will uh, go with k omega factors so i'll share the pdf also and uh, obviously you need to choose the enhanced wall treatment condition because uh, my result is only uh, nearby the wall condition right so if you choose enhanced wall treatment uh, you'll get a proper uh, result nearby the wall okay so once it is selected i don't want to disturb any other uh, things i'll just leave as it is and say uh, click on okay so now our viscous model is uh, get assigned so the next thing is you need to do here is the creation of material so just double tap on the material so by default the fluid is yeah so just click on that so i'll change the density to 1 and uh, viscosity factor to 2 e power minus 0.5 okay so once it is get changed just click on change and create so it ask you to overwrite so once it is updated just click on close okay so uh, in our case our fluid domain is a fluid okay so the one thing we forgot to do is we don't it assign that surface is a fluid right in the design modeler so whenever you create a surface just be make sure just click on the surface right now by default it set to solid so i will shift to solid from fluid and say close and uh, right click and say update so by default the surface is set to solid if you don't change from here uh, it won't be up included in the fluent itself okay now the meshes get updated so in fluent itself you'll have an option to update so do you want to update the mesh changes yes okay so now it is get updated okay so the remaining condition you don't need to change at all so okay so once it is updated so right now we only working on a single fluid that is air so we need to assign that fluid right so just click on the cell zone condition and fluid uh the surface body is by default assigned with air and so click on apply and close i don't want to change any at all and directly we will move on to the boundary condition so we have so many conditions that is axis in that like this so when i click on inlet by default the velocity inlet is involved uh i'll click on edit so in my condition the velocity may be 1 meter per second so other than that you have a two factors so that is turbulent intensity and uh, turbulent viscosity ratio so also you have a ratio to choose that so that is uh, you can also define the turbulence rate by the intensity and then uh, hydraulic diameter okay 
what is it means so it defines the uh, intensity of the turbulence okay. so what does it means uh, a turbulence means like the spinning of the fluid we have so it uh, how can we actually calculate this is uh, the range of the reynolds number have you aware of that uh, reynolds number reynolds number so the reynolds numbers value is defined by the factor of once again so v v and u so in our cases uh, they give the factor that is 10000 so we know that uh, over 2400 i mean below below this region we consider it as a laminar flow over this condition we call it as a uh, up to 4800 range we call it as a transitional uh, flow over the 4000 we call it as a turbulent flow so totally you have a uh, two things uh, if you give the factor of 5% turbulence in intensity so you may be have a low turbulence low turbulence i mean uh, there is no much difference i mean uh, much disturbance at all so if you increase us this factor up to uh, between 20 to uh, 35% give any factor which is uh, between 20 to 35 we call it as a medium turbulence medium turbulence so over 50 Or, or 60 in between uh, 35 uh, over 35 and then uh, in between 60 to 100 not 100 at all we around 70 region we call it as a high turbulence so based upon the turbulent intensity you can give the factor so right now i use pi and what is it means hydraulic diameter so that is my pipe to diameter okay so my pipe diameter is 0.2 so i have to give that point so once it is set and click on apply so since even though if it is a symmetrical problem you have to give it as a whole value that is diameter value don't give the value as point 1 and close it so now our in inlet conditions is uh, set it and just click on access and by default the type is set to access uh, you don't need to worry about that so if you say any other name like center line if you name it as a center line probably you need to change the type to access from this types so by default i give it as access so we don't need to change it that and outlet condition you can define that outlet condition uh, maybe i'll just select outflow so whatever it is inlet uh, i mean inlet velocity that will be goes on outlet so i'll give the factor of 1 and wall is wall uh, we don't have any other uh, factors so if you want to define the frictional coefficients you can go to edit and uh, specify the shear factors also in x and y but i don't want to apply just close it okay so now we uh, we have defined that access condition inlet and uh, wall and outlet conditions everything okay so the next thing is we need to move on to the solutions that is numerical solutions solutions tab methods uh, i'll shift out to coupled to simple and uh, choose second order wind up for all the things so once it is selected you can directly move on to the uh, initialization process so it's better to be with hybridized initialization and click on initialize so now you get a 10 values once it is selected and you go to calculation and uh, maybe you can give an iteration factor of 300 or anything Okay, so I'll give a factor of three hundred. Okay, okay, so you can set to seven hundred. 
weight may take higher iteration factor and click on calculate so once you click on calculate the problem will get uh, iterated okay so the solution is actually converged at 93 even though if it is not completed or converged uh, you may get this message that is uh, your problem is, your solution is completed the calculation completed so either uh, two things will happen one is the problem will converge at some values like 93 or 193 or 293 something or else the entire iteration process will be completed so it will solve the problems for 700 steps so that uh, i just close the design modeler i mean sorry uh, fluent just click on uh, results 